Welcome back everybody. On today I'm taking a look at three drink gadgets to see how they really work. Today's three products are the Any Shaker, this interesting ice ball maker, and a six shot party dispenser. Let's see how they really work in today's video. All right, first up, let's take a look at this six shot party dispenser. First up is my unboxing, and then you'll see my first test with just plain water when it didn't go quite as expected. Check it out. <laughs> this is just a plain brown box, no markings whatsoever. And inside of this brown box are some uh, bubble wrap. It's like six plastic shot glasses. And here is your base. It looks like each one of these just snaps onto those. All right, then this is gonna snap onto this. This goes into the base. Oh, that was very simple. I'm also noticing that they, there's a, a cover here. So you can plug up these. So you, normally you can do up to six, but you don't have to do six. You can do as many or as few as you want. It's kind of cheap, but it's kind of attractive at the same time. Let me wash this all off and get started. Let me just pour some water through here and make sure it just works before I start wasting precious other liquids on this. Let's see what we got here. Really? All right, so what happened was I realized at this point that it, you can't just pour it in there and have it perfectly work. There's a little bit of a technique to it, so I sat down off camera and tried to figure it out. It's not hard, but you really can't go slow. You have to go quick. I found that moving an angle also helps. But once I figured that out, it actually went quite well. Check it out. All right, I have to admit, I actually had to turn the camera off and figure this one out because I thought you just poured it in there and it, was, it came out perfectly. That is not the case. If you just pour this in there, especially if you pour it slowly, the pressure is gonna make it uneven. It's gonna go through some of the holes faster than others. Some may fill up and some won't. So I, my first attempt was a failure, but I wanted to figure it out because I've seen videos of this and it should work. So the technique I kind of came up with is, is what seems to be working off camera. Hopefully I can make it work on camera as well. So instead of just pouring it at, at one angle slowly, there's three steps to making this work right. Number one, you wanna kind of go at a, at a semicircle. Number two, you wanna go fast so it can fill up and drain more equally. And number three, you wanna fill this all the way to the top as quickly as possible so it's the right amount. So I'm gonna try it once with water and once with something a little bit more expensive. Let's do it. You know what's gonna happen is it's not gonna work right now. I got the camera rolling. All right, here we go. Oh, there it goes, boom, that's right. It's not 100% equal, but it's pretty close. Let me empty this out and try it with the real stuff this time. No camera cuts on this one. We're doing it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. I don't know if you recognize that reference. Here we go. Oh, I think I did it. I think I did it. That's pretty even. That is pretty even. I think my technique seemed to actually work. I think I need a few of these after figuring that one out. I guess it may be good or bad if this is a technique required. It really isn't that hard once you do it a couple of times, but there is a bit of a learning curve that I'm surprised about. I thought you were just going to pour it in and it was going to work. That's not the case. If you just pour it in there, it's going to go out one side, not the other. You have to kind of rotate it and fill it fast. But once you do, it's actually pretty effective. It's definitely something you can kind of show off if you're having a few friends over. And again, you could clever some of these up. The technique works with or without these plugs in there, but you can just plug that up if you don't have six people that you need to, to serve. So I wasn't sure it was gonna work, but in the end, it finally did. Someone on Instagram asked if it would actually work with something thick like Bailey's Irish Cream. This is what my dog Bailey's named after, by the way, but let's find out how well it works with something like this. Here we go. I would say to answer your question, it does work pretty well. All right, next up is this device that makes two rather large ice balls. 
And for the ice ball maker, I actually did a couple of round of tests. My first test was just using regular filtered water to see if it actually would work at all and see what, how the ice balls turned out. I also wanted to show you how clear filtered water looks. For my second test, I used distilled water to get as clear as ice as I could. But let's first take a look at my first test and see how that went. Now, I've got a lot of requests for ice balls over the years. I've done some, but this, is a, this is, looks like a much bigger one than the ones I've done in the past. It makes a 2.4 inch diameter dual ice ball, so it's pretty large. This one takes 24 hours for two ice balls, so they better be pretty good. I've got some instructions here. I'll have to, uh, to read these over. Two ice molds, a water reservoir, and an insulated container. And all of this comprises of the ice making unit. So this just lifts out. There we go. All right, so well, it's, that's pretty good size. All right, I've disassembled this ice mold. I rinsed everything off. You're not supposed to rinse this off, actually, the insulation sleeve, so I'll put that to the side. So what you're supposed to do is pretty simple. All you're supposed to do is fill up the max fill line, which is about right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's about right there. Not very easy to read. All right, now all I'm supposed to do is take the mold, put it together, which I've done, and place it in there. I'm gonna go gentle so water doesn't come flying out of there. All right, so then the last step is to put it in the insulation sleeve. There we go. It's, it's a very solid filling unit. I guess all I have to do is put it in the freezer for 24 hours, and we supposedly have two beautiful ice balls. So I'll put it in the freezer and come back 24 hours and see how it goes. All right, here we go, 24 hours. There is some ice in there, so I think that's supposed to be normal. We got one on each side. All right, so they are kind of frosty looking, but they do say to let it sit at room temperature for about 10 minutes, and that should clear up. Let's see. I would say the roundness looks perfect. I mean, the, the shape is absolutely perfect. There's a little bit of extra stuff here that comes off easily. So as far as roundness goes, it looks nice. Here's the other one. So I'm gonna let these sit 10 minutes and see how clear they look. We'll try filter water today, and we'll try distilled water tomorrow and see which one's better. So let me come back in 10 minutes and see how this looks. Okay, we're about 16 minutes now. The outer frost is gone, but I think the inside, it's not gonna get any better than that. Didn't expect much from filter water, but I was curious. Now I'm gonna try distilled water and see how that goes. It's perfectly round. It's a very nice, round, attractive ball, but it's not clear yet. We have to keep working until we get it clear. So at this point, I was pretty convinced it was gonna make nice, big, round ice balls, but as you can see, the filtered water does not yield clear ice cubes. So I got some distilled water, I filled up the mold, I put it in the freezer for 24 hours, and here's how the distilled water looked. All right, just out of the fridge, let's take a look. Once again, I got one on this side, one on this side. Put one of these off to the side here. I'm gonna let these sit until this frost goes away and see how much better it looks. I kind of have a good feeling about this one. Looking through the even the frost, it looks like there's not anything inside. Check back in about 10 minutes, see how it looks. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. and Taking a closer look, it looks really nice. Look at this. The distilled water is definitely the way to go. Look at that, look at that crystal ball. Couple of bubbles in there, but otherwise pretty nice. All right, let's try the real world test one more time. Right, nice, big, clear ice ball. This time it is clear. Man, I wish my cousin was here. He has a YouTube channel. He talks about whiskey on there. In fact, I'll link his channel below. Go there and tell him I said hi and check out one of his videos. He talks about whiskey a lot on there as well. But I digress. Much better, I must say. So clearly it's more about the distilled water than the mold itself. The mold makes nice, beautiful, round ice balls, but the clearness is gonna come through distilled water. Now it's time for the any shaker. Now the point of this gadget is it can supposedly turn any cup or mug into a shaker bottle. This part stretches over the opening. This little metal ball here kind of breaks up the chunks. This one was actually pretty straightforward. Here's how my test went. All right, let's open up this any shaker. It says mix your favorite drink in any cup. I'll be honest, the one I got, it was a lot smaller than I expected. I don't know what I expected, but it does seem smaller than I anticipated. Very interesting. I can't say I've ever seen anything quite like this before. The packaging says it's great for traveling, easy to clean, odor-proof, leak-free. They do say to make sure it's dry before you use it, and it will not secure on a non-dry or slippery cup rim. Make sure it's sufficiently pulled down over the sides. They recommend practicing it before you actually put any liquids in there. Probably a good idea. 
All right, so there really is not much to it. It's it's very interesting looking though. So we'll we'll practice with some cups and then put some liquid in there and see how it works. I was trying to think about what scenario you would actually need something like this. And obviously at home, you're not going to need something like this. But there would be scenarios where bringing a full-size blender bottle is not going to be convenient. Something like if you're out hiking for the day, maybe if you're traveling, there'd be instances where that would be just be too cumbersome to put it in vital bag space, so something like this might actually be better. Especially for travel, if you have access to cups that are in the hotel room, but not necessarily a blender bottle. So I'm gonna try testing it out on a few different types of cups. So we're gonna look for number one, if it's actually leak proof, and number two, and how it actually mixes the powder I put in there. I've just got a few household cups around here. This is the kind of cup you probably see in a hotel room, so I'll be interested in that one. I've got my aluminum cup here. This is just a regular cup, regular glass. I'm gonna try one first, just as a control test to see how it goes with nothing in there. That's what they recommend anyways. It kind of feels like the Unilid that I reviewed a couple years ago. I'm not sure how centered that's supposed to be. It's kind of centered-ish, but I don't know. It feels like it might be watertight. The Unilids actually were surprisingly watertight, and this is exactly what they feel like. They just have this kind of dangly thing at the bottom. I'm not sure what the name of this is. What do you call that? It's almost like a, a Christmas ornament or something. All right, so we've got some water in the cup. I've got an orange powder here that will hopefully stand out. Here we go. It is not shaken up. It is just sinking to the bottom. Now they're very clear that the cup itself cannot be wet. So these are all dry cups. Let's see. That went on there pretty well. I think I'm getting better at this. First of all, let's see if it actually leaks. And, all right. Okay, we're in good shape here. Now look at all that, all that stuff stuck in the bottom there. Here we go. It feels pretty sturdy. I mean, I don't feel like it's, it doesn't seem like it's slipping off. I'm shaking it in pretty good shape here. All the orange crud has been dissolved. I think the test number one on a pretty small glass, I wasn't sure that was gonna work in there, worked pretty well. I'm gonna keep moving, but I'm pretty optimistic at this point. All right, this is the kind of glass you might see at a friend's house. Maybe you don't have your blender bottle, but you've got your any shaker. Let's see. All right, the any shaker is dried off. I'm gonna apply it to this dry glass. The application is a little bit awkward. You have to make sure you hold it in place while you're stretching it. Not too bad, but it is something to get a little bit used to. Not 100% centered, but pretty close. Let's see how tight that is. As you can see all the junk in there. Now let's try shaking this up. I can see the metal ball is kind of breaking up all the orange chunks in there. It's good at that. It, I mean, it's not, it's not coming off. No chunks on the any shaker. It looks very well blended. Let me see. Very smooth. Let's do a couple more different sizes, but we're kind of on a roll. I'm liking what I see here, so let's keep going. You really can't see in there very well, but I do have water in there. Add, see, adding the powder to the water. Again, a little bit awkward putting it on. There might be a better technique than I'm doing, but it seems to be working. I just kind of stretching and holding. All right, so you're in a hotel room. This is all you have access to. You can still blend your powders if you have the any shaker, supposedly. Oh yeah, there it is. Or you can even use the handle for like improved shaking technique. I'm shaking it pretty hard. It's not coming off. Let's just take a look at how clear that looks. It definitely broke it up. There was no chunks left. I've got one more here. I wasn't sure about this one because it has kind of a bit of a lip here. I don't know if the any shaker can handle that or not, but let's find out. I'll try a different powder this time. Once again, kind of a, kind of a two-hand thing. You get part of it started. This is the way I'm doing it. Now, this may not be the best way, but this is the way I'm doing it. Kind of get it started and just hold it in place with one hand while you pull on the other. If, you have any, if there's any, any shaker gurus out there that say I'm, there's a better way of doing it, I'm all ears. All right, I don't know if it's gonna work because it has that lip, so let's, let's see. I mean, I'm kind of pulling it as best I can here. It does seem to be covering it, let's see. 
I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. I was, I was going very gingerly on that in case I poured over my, my table. But let's see. All right. It's working. Even on the ball aluminum cup, no leaks. I haven't no leaks. I did four cups, no leaks at all. So I would say after my test of the any shaker, drum roll please, is that it works. Well, that's it for this video. As far as the pros and cons go, the pros for all of these is they eventually did work. As far as the cons goes, the drink dispenser does take a little bit of a technique to get it right. I'd suggest practicing this before you want to show off to your friends. The ice ball maker definitely needs distilled water if you want to have clear ice cubes. And the any shaker also takes a bit of a technique to get it over any glass or mug. It was a fun batch of drink products. I'm glad I tried them out. But if you've tried any of these, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.